you guys are doing well. So far, so good? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you kind of a, a shorter version. We're, we're getting close in our time here of really my story and, and just the Reader's Digest version. Bottom line is this, after I went to college, got my education, went into the workforce, first 10 years in the workforce, and, and, and I think this is probably where a lot of us connect here. Uh, it was frustrating for me. And the reason it was frustrating wasn't that I didn't have some successes in the first 10 years of my existence in the workforce. It's like nothing made sense to me. I mean, anything that you did, you just kind of felt like it was temporary, at least to me. And I felt like that, you know, is this it? This is it? I'm just going to do this for 40 years and that's it? Do you guys ever feel that way? And I found myself in this position where I was like, I just wasn't happy. Nothing made sense to me as far as what I could do with my life. I remember one time my dad said to me, he said, because I was making money at uh, what I was doing, and he just said, what's wrong with you? Because I wasn't happy there. I just, I just didn't see it last. When it wasn't until I heard this concept okay, about this business and what it meant and what it could be like that it really spoke to me. I just not, didn't see any curriculum like that you know, in the college world. And so when I stumbled into this business, you can call it fate, you can call it whatever. I, I think it's fate. Because we're all a volunteer army here. We all come here for a reason. We're drawn here. Nobody made us come here. Okay? The, the signal went out into the market. You heard it. And you were attracted to it. Just like I was. Okay? And from that point as I got here and I realized that this was what I was looking for. It just was never available in the traditional sense. And once I found it and then was able to find this company. I mean, unbelievable. And so let's give this going to happen. I'm going to talk to you guys about, I think this is one of the harder presentations because it's kind of a hard one to kind of dovetail through because I think people misunderstand it a lot, and that's being a team player. Terry kind of touched on it a little bit during her presentation, but let me just kind of jump into this for just a second. We're going to talk about four categories here. We're going to talk about duplication. You've got to remember this. People are watching you. Just about anything you're going to do is going to get copied, pretty much, okay? We're going to talk about edification, how well... Do you lift others? All right. We're also going to talk about respect, respecting your cross line, which some people call this cross lining or no cross line. This just simply is how well you work with others. Okay. And then the fourth thing is coaching. Okay. How well do you bond with the people that matter most, the people that really need you in the business? Okay. And how well do you guide them? And uh, we'll just kind of move through this one at a time, and I'll try to give attention to it with the time I have to kind of drill it home for you if I can. But. I want you to understand your business, at the end of the day, will be a reflection of you. Okay, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. It all depends on what you see in the mirror and what it is you want your group to look like. It will reflect you at the end of the day. Okay, and so I think that what I want you guys to imagine is if you can see an army out there, and this army marches in unison, okay, and they're powerful because they're of one mind. And they move forward, accomplishing the tasks they need to do, all in unison. No one's breaking rank. Nobody's doing something weird. Nobody's drawing all the attention to them. It's about the army. You guys see this vision in your mind? If you can create that with your organization, and that army just goes out there and cranks and just does what they're supposed to do, at some point, you can eliminate yourself from that equation, and the army continues to march on. Okay, but if that picture starts to fracture and break down, and that starts with you, then all bets are off as to how that army will perform for you. All right, and so it's about that army. And so I believe that we need to teach easily repeated things when we go out there and we build our business. Okay, so, so exposure techniques. I, anytime I'm on a three-way call with someone on my downline, if they haven't shown some video to somebody or if they've listened to something, they haven't done that, I don't even want to be on the call. Do you know why? Because if I have to take 45 minutes to kind of be very persuasive and convince these people to do something, that does not replicate or duplicate very easily. But if the tools did the majority of it, and I just kind of highlight a few things, edify the upline that got me on the phone with that prospect, we're off to the races and anybody can do that. All right, and so easily repeatable, duplicatable tools, techniques, and those kinds of things. So. That is something that we need to look at. The system has that. All right? And so, do that. Um, teamwork. Teach your group about teamwork. You don't want to create a war zone. You don't want to go and, and 
neuter somebody that's got aggressiveness that wants to go out there and build their team. Okay, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you can create an environment where there's a workability. Okay, people, they want to come to some place they feel comfortable. They don't want to come into a war zone where everyone's tearing everyone up. All right, so create that, and it starts with you. Now, with that, you've got to teach urgency to people. I believe that. But also abundance at the same time. In other words, if people have this urgency, and you want them, you want them to chomp at the bit, all right? You want to be out there aggressively doing what we need to do. But the truth of the matter is, is if, if we don't teach abundancy with that, if for some reason they don't have early success with who they think their best people are, or the first time they run into a, they come to a meeting and one of the contacts they were thinking of contacting is at the meeting with someone else, it'll blow them right out of business. There are so many people out there that need to hear this message. There's so many people out there that will respond and come to this business. And so, abundancy with urgency. Now, personal development. What does this mean? Of course you can read things. Of course you can listen to things. And the system talks about those kinds of things. But I think this was most best taught to me, I think, early in the game. I was very lucky because I had influence with Clara McDermott when I first started this business. And there was a tendency for me, and some of you guys have probably experienced this, when you're doing the business, you had this feeling that you wanted to help the people that needed your help. Have you ever had that experience or had that feeling? The people that were struggling, the ones that were kind of weaker, you kind of felt like you wanted to lift them up. And Clara said to me one day, she says, Jeff, let me teach you something. She says, never support strength to weakness. Because every time you support your strength to weakness, you get more of what? Weakness. Always support strength to strength. And if you will remember that and support strength on strength, you will find the people and develop the group that you're looking to develop. And that always stuck with me. And so whenever I found myself in that situation, I thought, am I supporting a weakness or a strength of this person? Then I would just cancel it out and move towards the strength. You want to have a strong organization, start with yourself and start how you do it, all right? Strength on strength. Now, integrity. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Okay? If your word is your bond. And I don't care, no little white lies, then they said, you say you're going to do something, do it. Because the first time that you start to deviate from that, people look at you differently. You start to lose some credibility. And probably more importantly, you lose personal power every time you don't do what you say you're going to do. And people are watching. That's the important thing. It's about what replicates. So be someone worthy of emulation because duplication starts with you. Does this make sense? Okay, people are watching. Edification. If I say this, you guys finish it. If you can't say something nice, don't, don't say, say anything, anything at all. all. We all know this, right? We were taught this growing up. Yet it's in our nature to kind of backbite. It's in our nature to kind of gossip. I mean, there's a whole industry out there that makes billions of dollars just doing that, right? It's everywhere. Okay, not here. Okay, this is the culture. You know, we talk about things, Ed talked about, I've had this flood at my house, and so it's like negative right now. But I can come here, and the world is okay, all right? Because this is us, all right? So forget the stuff out there. This is the world we've created. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And when we talk about edification, you want to edify the company's products. You want to edify the company itself. Okay, because as people are coming in and looking at this, what's going to happen here is they're going to hear these edification words, but they're going to go by more what they feel. And I can tell you, oftentimes I've heard people say, you know what made the difference for me? It was all the energy I felt. It was the positive nature I felt. And this is, they didn't say it wasn't the positive words I heard. It was the positive feelings I felt. And so that starts with us. Edify your upline, your downline. Okay, three-way call, for example. If I get my upline on a three-way call, I'm going to always edify them. They can't edify themselves to the prospect. That's my job. Okay, if I do a three-way call for a downline uh, leader, okay, we're talking to a prospect, I'll lay the presentation out or whatever it is I'm doing, but I'll always turn it back to the person that got them on the, the phone call and edify them. Okay? Selling the benefits of the person that they're working with. And as we edify one another, we find the positive aspects that are there. All of a sudden, we've got this uplifting culture. Okay? Where it's very positive. 
and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so we edify all aspects of the business, and that creates this, this environment that we're talking about. All right, and it starts with each and every one of us. Now, yeah, is there a tendency sometimes to get into that negativity? Yes, that is. There's, there's a tendency that that happens. When that happens, always go where? To your upline. If you've got some negative things going on, go to your upline. And we'll talk about this in a minute when we talk about coaching. All right? Don't go sideline, don't go downline, because that poisons or tarnishes, you know, that edification process that we're talking about. Now, respecting cross line. I think this is probably one of the most misunderstood concepts in System 7. I've heard people say things over and over that they didn't, and I can tell when they start talking, they don't get this. Respecting cross line, no cross line, does not mean that you don't associate with people. Okay? It doesn't mean that you can't be friends with people. But here's where the, where the mix up comes in it's when people, as I talk about coaching in a minute, they try to take the coaching concept and move it into a cross line environment. That's where the problem comes in, and I'll explain that in a second. So, first and foremost, keep the ego out of it. Because almost every time that this cross lining thing happens, there's some ego involved somewhere in there. And I'll explain that further in a minute. Up there, you see parent child relationship. What does that mean? I'm going to give you something of an act that I think all of us can understand. We live in a community. Let's say this is our community. We all have our homes. And inside our homes, we all have, you know, kind of our methodology of how we conduct ourselves. You can call it a belief system. You can call it religion. Call it whatever you want to call it. But in your home, that's what you have. Well, let's say that your child happened to come over to my house. And I have a completely different orientation and belief system that I run my house with. And they happen to be in my house. And I kind of say, hey, uh, what does your dad teach you? And they start to tell me, or say they start to ask me, and I say, well, you know, here's what we do. Here's what we believe. And your kid comes back to your house, and they say, hey, the Max over here, they don't believe the same things that we do. Here's what he told me I should be doing. Are you going to be pissed? <laughs> of course you're going to be pissed. Because what has happened right there? A third party intervened in a parent-child relationship. They got no business sticking their nose in. You guys follow me on that? Yes. Do you see that? Now, now the reason I'm being very direct here because it's the same thing when it comes to violating cross-line principles. Now, it may not be so obvious, all right? But here's the deal. That organization, that family that's created by what, that leadership or that household or that team, if it's not your household, you got no business coaching or sticking your nose in. Okay, you edify that household, you edify that leadership. You don't interfere with that parent-child relationship because that creates a friction or a rub or a disillusionment. Because who's to say that what you're doing is the best anyway? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm telling you, there's different roads that lead to the goal in this business. There is. Because it has nothing really to do with techniques. It has to do with going out there and doing work. All right? So. This also doesn't mean you can't talk to people about success. I mean, as I talk to people, they're like, oh man, you say that to people? You can do that? You know what? We need to be motivated, motivated by one another. Okay? I love it if another team that isn't mine is tearing it up. Because I can take that team and just beat my guys over the head with it. <laughs> All right? Look what they're doing, man. They're out there tearing it up. They're contacting a zillion people a day. We've got to up our game. I love it when another team is doing better than my team. Because that gives us, you know, be, be thankful for worthy opponents. Be thankful for people that motivate us to continue to do better. All right? Yeah. So we can share things like successful stories like the executive creation. In our group through the long, we created X amount of executives, and we got pin title advance, and we got success qualifiers. You know, we've had these this ability to overcome some, some adversity because it's going to happen, right? So you can talk about those kinds of things that help to move people down the pipe. Now, you ever been around anybody that likes to brag? Oh, yeah. What do you think about people that like to brag? <laughs> you know, I remember once high school football. Okay, this is, uh, this is two days before we actually put on the pads, and we're doing a little bit of, you know, kind of scrimmage type stuff. And there was a guy over on the other side, we all knew, and he's shooting his mouth up. You know, he's shooting his mouth up because he thinks he's so cool, he's so great. One of the guys in our house says, hey, do you guys want to see somebody get knocked on their butt and get hurt really bad? 
and we're like, yeah. Okay, the next play, boom, he lays him out, no more bragging, all right? Guys, bragging gets you nowhere, okay? Don't do that. It isn't about us anyway. It isn't about you and I, it's about the army, is it not? Okay, so don't brag. There's no secret sauce, all right? As people share information, this is where the rub comes in again. Oh yeah, well here's what we do, it's a little different from what being taught there, but hey, this is the success we have. There is no secret sauce. I've been doing this for 25, 26 years, okay? Almost, it feels like a long time. And I've never seen any secret sauce. You know what I found? It's who's gonna run the numbers? Who's gonna go through the numbers? Who's gonna make the most contacts? Because you can be the most pitiful presenter, you can have the worst techniques, but if you go through the numbers, you're gonna blow away someone that has a skill set. I guarantee it. Every time. Every time. I teach my children this all the time. If you work hard and you continue to apply yourself, and you will overcome those that have more talent than you. And I fully believe that. So when it comes to respecting cross sign, don't interfere with that parent-child relationship. Okay, now, last topic, coaching. Okay, this is where the upline and downline, this is that parent-child relationship I've been talking about. This is that relationship that's sacred in this business. This is where the rub happens if it gets interfered with. Okay, and in this situation, this is where a heart-to-heart -heart connection takes place. Okay, this is what I call the glue of the business. All right? Yeah, we're here to make money. Yeah, we're here to grow. We're here to do all these things. But this is the glue. This is where that bond takes place. Now, it might happen monthly. It might happen more frequently. There's not really any, you know, how-to here as needed, all right? And usually the downline is seeking the upline. They seek the upline and say, hey, can we, can we get together for a coaching? I, I need to ask you some things. Or maybe it just happens in the course of the day. Because anyone I'm working with closely, we're on the phone several times a day. Okay, and, and in this situation, this is where the private information is shared, okay? And this is where it's safe to do it. See, when you share this information in a sidelight environment with somebody that doesn't have a, a financial reason to be invested in you, you gotta ask yourself, why are people doing what they do? If there's no financial reason for me to get in your business, why would I get in someone else's business I don't have a financial reason to do that with? Okay, is it because my ego is so big that I have to like have it all be about me? Or is it just because I'm just sticking my nose in everyone's business? This situation is where you stick your nose right here. All right, and this is what you're talking about, Kendall, if you're struggling, how many contacts are you making a day? Well, tell me about the closing. Maybe we talk about some techniques here. This is a situation where I would share techniques with somebody that's in my organization where I might not do that in a situation in a cross-line environment. I would talk about some of the successes we've had, maybe some of the challenges and how we just kind of persevered through them in a general sense. This is where we would get down and say, okay, let's, here's what we need to try to do to kind of rectify this situation. This is where you're sharing personal information. And it goes both ways. Okay, you guys know this. Anyone you're close to in your organization, you know personal things about them. Okay, you know things they probably haven't told other people. Okay, and that's where that bond comes in and that trust. Okay, this is the glue. This is what makes this business viable. This is really where you connect. Okay, and it's that upline and downline connection. And in the course of doing this, this is where leadership development takes place. This is a people business. All right? And with that, we can work together, but collectively we gotta cherish that parent-child relationship. We have to realize that that is really what makes this thing tick. And as that glue takes place, and as the sidelines motivate each other as they continue to move forward, all ships rise, okay? This event, all right, is an example of that. This is a collection of many different organizations and downlines working under the same you know, mindset. And with that, as we continue to grow and continue what we need to do, guys, the sky's the limit. We will become the largest direct sales company in the world. Yes. Mark my words. Thank you. Thank you.